Hey guys, hope you're doing good. In this video, we're going to learn about static methods and class methods. So far, we have seen about instance methods. We are going to see uh, what is the difference between an instance method, a class method and a static method. So let us go ahead and see first what is class method with some example. Now here I have a, a class called as employee and I have three instance methods and one class variable, right? Now here in this, uh, I have an init method where I'm getting three inputs that is first, uh, first, last and salary as input through arguments and I'm creating a full name with the help of first name and last name, right? And I have a method, instance method called a set increment salary where I'm going to increment my employee's salary with the uh, help of increment percentage. I have an increment percentage of two percentage as of now and I have a uh, get AMP method to get the name and salary of the employee right now here what I'm doing I'm creating two objects EMP1 and EMP2 and I'm passing some uh, uh, arguments to it right Samuel Edison salary right so now here you can see that uh, some this is will be something new because I have not discussed this before with you right so these are called this default arguments now if I miss passing some argument by default this variables will take none, none and none. If you want to give some other value also, yes, you can give it. But uh, as of now, I've given none. Now, whatever it's given here, like if I don't give any argument here, right? If I don't give any argument here, by default, it goes here. Uh, it will take none by default, right? It will take none by default and it will initialize it. Got it? Okay. So these are called as default argument. And these need to be filled from right to left. Uh, like if I'm going to do like this, this will be an error because like if I want to fill everything like I need to fill everything right or I can also do like this. This is possible, right? This is possible, but like I have to start filling from the right till the left. Okay, fine. Let us start. Now. Let me run this code for you. Uh, I'm not printing anything. So let me say I'll print I'll say EMP one dot Get EMP Then say emp2 dot get emp. Let me run this code for you. Now, if I run the code, you can see like the first employee name is Samuel Edison and the salary is ten thousand. The second case, second employee name is uh, Blessin Jordan and the salary is eight thousand. Now, if I want to increment my salary, right? It's very simple. I may need to call my set increase sal method, right? I'll say emp1 dot Set increase cell, right, and then try to print EMP one. Right. So let me run this code. Now you can see his uh, previous salary was ten thousand, and after increment the salary is ten thousand. 200 right this is how I do it right now here if I want to change the percentage of the increment that I want to give to the employee right every year I can uh, I can change my increment value right if I want to change the class variable right instead of using a, a instance method right I can better go for a class method right so by by uh, default any instance method will take like right? uh, object as argument so whatever I'm passing from here it will take object as argument but any class method by default takes the class name uh, the class as the argument right uh, let me say def uh, let me say set set increment percentage right so I'm going to set the percentage of what I'm going to increment right before uh, previously like now as of now it is 0. 0 to that is 2 percentage. Now if I want to increment it to 5 percentage, yes, it is possible. I can do that, right? So let me explain you how to do it. Uh, now if I want to create a class method, I'll be using a decorator called as class method, right? So I have to use a decorator called as class method, right? If at all guys, if you don't know what is a decorator, I've done a different video on decorator. I've given the link in the description. Please go and watch it, okay? Fine. You can see by convention, uh, every instance method will take the self as parameter and uh, uh, by convention I'll, I'll be using CLS for the class method, right? I cannot use the name CLASS -E because class has a different meaning. That's uh, a keyword here. I cannot use that, okay? Now, uh, to create a class uh, method, I'm using the decorator called as class method 
and uh, to catch the class name as argument i'll be using cls here right as parameter right that's by convention you can give anything else right and let me get the percentages input let me call the method right right to call the class method i'll be using the class name right employee dot sit increment percentage and uh, uh, let me pass 0 0.05 that's 5 percentage right i'm changing it to 5 percentage that will come and store here right so i'll say cls dot uh, i'll be using the class variable that is increase and let me change it right? 5 percentage right so let me copy that and paste it here okay now before it was uh, 10,200, let us see like what is the incremented met value, right? So when I say set increase percentage, this method will be called and CLS will be holding the class name, right? As your uh, instance method takes the object as first argument, uh, the class method will take the class name as the first argument, right? So CLS will be holding the class name, right? If you want, you can see just let me over it. You can see that class is stored with employee, right? And this person, uh, I'll be passing from here, right? Just 0 0.05, that is the 5 percentage I'm passing into per, right? Okay, let me run this code for you. Before that, let me save it. Now you can see before it was 10,200, now it is 10,500 because I've changed my increment percentage from 2 percentage to 5 percentage, right? I'm just changing it to 5 percentage. Now this is how you use class method, right? So it is always better to use the class method to change or to update the class variables better don't go with the instance method right so instance method are used only to handle the instance variable right so if i want to handle the uh, class variable it is better i go for the class method because that will be for the entire class okay got it so i'm using the class name to call the class method right i've never seen people using the object name to use object to uh, call the class method but we can do it right that is also possible that doesn't give sense anyway i'll tell you that it is also possible right so i can use the object to call the class method but it is not advisable uh, it doesn't look nice as well right still it works right you can see still it works without any problem it will work but it is better that you use the class name to call the class methods okay we can also use the class method to create an alternative constructor let me tell you with some different example in this example i have a class called as person and inside that i have two instance method one is init method other one is get per method now here my init method helps me to initialize my values uh, that my instance variables and get per method prints all my details right and i have created an object and i pass some arguments to the init method right and i'm initializing it here right so when i say uh, creating an alternate constructor with the help of class right it means that we can use this class method in order to provide multiple ways of creating objects now as of now this is the only way of creating object right for example if i have a comma separated string like this right i say uh, person info and i say i have a comma separated string samuel edison and india now if i want to parse the string and store it inside the object right uh, that is my first name last name and address i want to parse the string and store it right before creating an object how will i do it that is what we're going to see now right so let me say first last and address and let me say how will i separate this i'll just say person and just go info dot split and I'm going to split based on the comma. And after that, I'll be creating an object. I'll say per2 assign person. And then I'll be passing this first, comma last, and then uh, the address. Right? So this is how I do it, right? And then I'll be saying, right, let me say per2 dot get per. Now what I'm doing here is I'm uh, giving the information about the person in a comma separated string and then I'm parsing it with the help of split method. Uh, I'm just separating everything and storing it in three different variables and I'm uh, creating an instance or and then I'm passing these three arguments, right? So let me run this code for you.
So you can see Blisson, Jordan, and addresses Chennai, Samuel Edison, and addresses India, right? So whatever I've given here, the input as a string, like I've parsed the string, split it, and then stored inside a variable, and then I've created an object, and then passed it. Now there is nothing different here, right? I'm just uh, doing these two lines extra, and then calling the or creating the object as the same way, right? Now, if I don't want to do this way, I want to do it a, with the help of class method. How will I do it? That is what I'm going to tell you now. Okay, let me create a class method with the help of a class a class method decorator. Let the class let the method name be set person info, right? And by default, the your class method takes the class name as the first argument, right? Let me say class and let me take two arguments. I'll tell you why I'm taking two arguments. Now from here, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to call the method, right? So this, um, let me comment this out. Now I'm going to call the method with the help of class name. So let me say set, set person info. And instead of passing these three, I'm just going to pass the person info alone, right? So I'm calling the set person method and I'm passing the string, right? So the string will come and get stored in info and the class name will be there in CLS, okay? Uh, here what I'm going to do, whatever I did here, I'm going to do there. Right? Let me copy and paste it here. So here I've split it, the string and stored in first, last and address, three different variables. And from here, let me say written CLS and all these three variables. So let me put all the three variables here. Now when I do this, what's happening? Let me close this for you. Now here, I'm calling the set per info method, that's a class method, and I'm passing the string. So when I pass the string, it's getting stored in info, and CLS will be storing the class name. And here, I'm splitting the string and storing it in three different variables. And I say written CLS, it means that person, right? So person of first, last, and address. So when I say, a class name and put a parenthesis by default it will create an instance right so now this entire line is getting returned to this place right so this place will be holding exactly like this right i'll say person of it will be samuel because i've split the string edison and india so this will get replaced in this position right so when this get replaced in this position, it'll be like this. It'll be like I'm creating an object called as per2 and it will be holding this information. It means that I'm creating an object and I'm passing this. Now here, when I do this, from this place, the init method will be called and first will be Samuel, last will be Edison and address will be India, right? That is what it happens here, right? When I do this, like right, when I say person of Blessing, Jordan and Chennai, right? It comes here, first name will be, uh, it, it calls the init method, right? It calls the init method to be, uh, to, to, to say perfectly, right? When I create an object, init method will be called and these three arguments will be passed here. The same thing is happening here, right? So I'm using a class method to create a different type of constructor, my own constructor, right? So uh, that is that's what happening is the init method acts like my constructor. Now here, when I do this, set per method, does the work here, split everything, and returns this information here, which in turn will be like this, right? It is like per2, that is a, a per2 assign person of Samuel Edison in India. Now here it means in turn it calls the init method from here and then initializes the values, I'm sorry, initializes the values and then returns it back, right? So when I say per2 dot get per, let us see what's happening. Let me save this code for you. So you can see the first information is Samuel, sorry, Blessin, Jordan and Chennai. The second information is Samuel, Edison and India. There is no big difference. It does the same work, right? But it's giving an impression that I'm creating my own constructor or a creating a different type of object. So this gives an impression of creating a different type of, different way of creating an object, but it is not so, right? It's just to give an impression. That's all, right? Uh, that's it for a class method. Uh, let me tell you some example for static methods. Uh, let me clear this out and give a different example. In this example, I have a class called as employee and I have some instance variables, first, last, full name and salary. And I have a, a, 
uh, I'm just printing it with the help of get per method, right? Now here I'm creating two objects, emp1, emp2, and I'm passing some values to it, right? Okay, so let me run this code for you. So you got the information, the full name with the salary and full name with the salary because I'm processing the full name here with the help of first name and the last name. Now here, if I want to know the number of objects that has been created for my class, right? So I can do that with the help of, uh, let me create a class variable called this uh, number of EMP, right? Let me initialize it to zero and I can increment every time an object is created let me say so when an object is created in it in immediately the init method will be called so let me do that inside my init method right? so whenever an object is created the init method will be called and the uh, number of employees will be incremented now here i use a static method to print the information for that i'll be using a decorator called a static method right let me say def number of EMP and then say this doesn't take any argument right so you would have seen that your uh, uh, instance method takes uh, the object as argument and class method takes the class name as argument wherein the static method doesn't take any argument because it doesn't belong to any of the uh, uh, class right it doesn't belong to the class only like it is a, it is a kind of a, a standalone function okay so here I can use this small small informations to be printed or if I want any information that is not related to my class right I can use a static method okay so for this don't ever go for uh, class method okay that's not the uh, best advice to go for a class method you it's, it's better to go for a static method because this method doesn't going to do anything which is related to my class right I'm not going to do anything related to my class I'm just going to print my information so if if I want a standalone function which is going to give some information about for me I'll be using a static method okay so here I can say um, I'll be using the class variable called as number of employees right I'll say employee dot number of employees because uh, class variable can uh, can be used only with the help of class name right so objects created right so this is a standalone function doesn't belongs to any instance okay now here to call this uh, static method I'll be using the class name dot number of e employees let me clear the screen for you. Okay, I missed the class name here. So any uh, class variable must be preceded by the class name and a dot, right? Without that, I cannot use it. Now you can see like uh, two uh, information about the employees created and you can see two objects created here right so this will call this static method right so this here from here it is calling the static method and I'm printing the number of employees information right so if I want to do something inside my class but which it's not relevant or which is not related to anything to do with the class information I can better go for a static method right so uh, in uh, in certain instances you need to avoid using instance method right we need to either go for a class method or a static method right so whenever i want to do some process that is related to the class that is much relevant to class or the instance variables i will be using the instance method wherein if i want to do something to my uh, class variable or a class attribute right i'll be using for a i'll be going for a class method right and uh, I'm going to do some process which is not relevant to my class at all, right? Which is not, which I'm not going to do anything. Uh, no process is going to happen because of that, right? I'll be using a static method, right? I hope you understood the difference between uh, instance method, class method, and the static method. If at all you have any doubts uh, regarding this, please comment in the comment section. I've done with this video, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.